and 70s, it was a period of uh, agrarian reform and post-agrarian reform. So it, uh, it was a very interesting period because the communities were freed and uh, um, there were, there were uh, other institutions working with communities as the Mission Andina, Mission Andina and um, the uh, Summer uh, Institute of uh, Linguistics and the Amazon and they were working with, uh, with the communities and it was uh, feeding a process of ethnogenesis in the communities. And then the communities within the haciendas were able to re rearticulate themselves uh, and to, to, to move, to, to make uh, contacts between or among communities um, and uh, even to travel to the coast uh, in order to work and establish in there. Um, uh, so the, um, in this, uh, yeah, so the first uh, indigenous organizations main claims were the land, culture, and identity. So until this moment, many, uh, there were uh, some organizations, indigenous organizations, but uh, subsumed within the political, the leftist political parties, yeah, within the soci socialist party, Ecuadorian party, and the communist social party. And there, were the, um, there was the more known organization of this period is the Federación Ecuatoriana de Indios. So the Ecuadorian Indian Federation, which was part of the communist uh, party. Uh, but there were many, uh, many tensions with, uh, with uh, leftist leaders. So, um, uh, and then in this, uh, this period when the, um, uh, uh, when the uh, law of re agrarian reform um, uh, came to, to practice, so um, the indigenous uh, just uh, organized themselves w w uh, under a different, different ideas than uh, than the leftist interests. So, um, so the core ideas of the new organizations, or the first indigenous organizations, was land, uh, land culture, and identity. So, within this, these claims, yeah, the indigenous and uh, indigenous education, they yeah, are called the kicking yachay, yeah, the education propia, right, um, yeah, um, was highly desired and it was part of the starting agenda um, of different uh, organizations and different levels. levels. So uh, there were uh, uh, federal uh, province, uh, province federations and the Corunari, which was a highland regional organization. Uh, it's uh, Ecuador Una Conapa Hricharimui, which is um, uh, the awakening of indigenous uh, peoples of Ecuador. And then in the Amazon, the Federación Shuar, the Shuar Federation, yeah, and it was very early in the 1960s. Yeah? And all of these organizations were interested in education. So in the, in the Shuar Federation, for example, they started in the very early in the 60s a huge project of education by uh, using the, the radio. Yeah, with support of uh, uh, missionaries and um, um, Salesian missionaries and other other uh, missions um, um, located in the Amazon. So in 19, 1970, 79, um, uh, there is a, with a, what is called the return to democracy. So the, um, there were uh, many dictatorships before this uh, this year, and then. Um, uh, there are a uh, political campaign and then the country and the, uh, the indigenous organizations are very active in political negotiations with the presidential candidates. Yeah, what were negotiating? Yeah, especially the uh, access to land uh, and the bilingual education. Yeah, so Jaime Roldos won the elections and very early in the 1980s, yeah, five institutos normales bilingües. So it is a kind of... Uh, uh, institutions in charge of uh, educating uh, 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 young people for being teachers. Yeah? So uh, Institutos Normales Bilingües were created with, uh, within the indigenous territories and, and the indigenous communities. Yeah? It's the first time we have a, uh, this kind of institution. So just to see, yes, this is the Instituto Normal Bilingüe, Jaime Roldos. It's located in the central Ecuador. Yeah, this is the uh, 
Instituto Normal Bilingüe Quilloaj, en el South, en Ecuador, yeah, the, and, uh, Instituto Normal Canelos, en Northern Amazon, the Instituto Normal Bomboisa, uh, it's a Shuar, Shuar uh, People Institute, located in the South, en Amazon, and then this is the Instituto Normal Marta Roldos, it's located in Limón Coche, it's in the middle of the jungle in the central Amazon. So this was the place where the Instituto, um, the Summer Institute uh, of Linguistic People were uh, working for many years just in the middle of the jungle. Yeah, so, um, and then this, uh, these constructions and buildings were used as to work with uh, this institute. Yeah, it is a uh, Quichua, Quichua, Quichua region. Yeah, now in 1980s, the Institute of Normal Bilingual Role, um, yeah, where it was assumed um, that, um, yeah, in, so in 1980s, so we have, we have already the Institute of Normal Bilingual, and these institutes had, uh, had a specific role or function within the education for indigenous peoples. So it was, um, in that, at that moment, it was assumed that the indigenous language needed to be man maintained. So uh, it was supposed the language were not in, in danger. Uh, uh, and uh, the only thing uh, uh, needed was to, to uh, train the, the um, uh, Quichua young people just to, to, to teach uh, the language and maintain, maintain them. So it was, uh, it was opened for indigenous students only. So at, at least this was the idea of uh, in the moment of creating these uh, these institutes, yeah, for indigenous students only, and the bilingualism, uh, the sense of bilingualism was not a function of the institutes, but it was uh, considered that the bilingualism uh, come from uh, home, so um, from the students' home. So, so the bilingualism was a requirement to be accepted in this institute. So the institute ro institutional role was focused on pedagogical training. And then the curriculum was the same as the urban normals and the indigenous languages um, were uh, treated as, as a foreign language uh, status, so two, three hours per, per week. <clears throat> okay, so in 1988, um, so it was created the uh, Dirección Nacional de Educación Intercultural Bilingüe, that's the National Directorate of Bilingual Education, DINAIB, and it was created as a part of the Ministry of uh, Education. Yeah, it was part of the, as a part of the agreement between the Minister of Education and the Confederación de Nacionalidades Indígenas, which is the largest organization in the country. So the schools, um, the schools along the country were divided in two, in two different uh, jurisdictions. Yeah, the Educación Hispana, and Hispanic Education, and the Educación Bilingüe Intercultural. Yeah, the Bilingual Intercultural Education. So it was uh, territorially divided, the, the schools in the country. So it was uh, actually a problematic uh, issue. I, 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 I worked uh, more than 10 years within this, this system, and this division uh, was uh, uh, a problem. So um, this, this institution was uh, um, uh, articulated the local and the experimental projects of bilingual education in the country. So before the DNA, there were many, many uh, uh, very focalized and limited projects throughout the country, in the Amazon, in the highlands. There were many, many projects, uh, private or, um, or projects uh, led by non-governmental non organizations, ONGs. Um, and then the DINAIB was uh, decentralized and autonomous, I, I, I told you before. So uh, it, means, it means that they had uh, a state um, uh, money and to, uh, and to administrate and they by themselves. Uh, the administration was decentralized, uh, the curriculum design, uh, design and the language policies and the educational resources production. So textbooks, textbooks, etc., were uh, prepared by people working in the DNAIB, yeah. Uh, but always it was within the Ministerio de Educación, so uh, Education Minister. Yeah, so um, it was in charge of driving or conducting the bilingual education of 13 nationalities and language. So it was, it was in, term, in terms of number of students, it was uh, uh, less than national 
the national uh, 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 the minister um, uh, obligations about education, but in qualitative terms, the Dineib weren't, was in charge of 13 nationalities. So it was, it was a huge challenge because uh, most of the indigenous nationalities didn't have any, any uh, 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 documents as to, to start education. So no grammars, no dictionaries, uh, no edu educational resources, nothing. Just in Quechua and Shuar, there were some, some resources, but the other nationalities, nothing, absolutely. And then the Dinaib had the challenge to produce educational resources for all these this, this people uh, by using their language. So it was a huge task from the at hands of indigenous administrators. So, um, So there is a there is a legal a legal frame yeah just um yeah to 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 talk about the uh, current situation of education so there are a, um, a legal frame a legal frame uh, which recognizes the, uh, the indigenous education and language and color and cultures in um, in a, in a good 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 manner so the constitution has the idea of interculturality and bilingual education, indigenous education, everywhere. So it is uh, just difficult to, 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 to cite all of the uh, ideas included in the constitutions, yeah, starting from the idea of uh, Summa Causa and uh, Pachamama, etc. And then uh, there is the Ley Organica de Educación Intercultural, so it is the general law. So it was supposed that uh, the whole education has to be intercultural. Yeah? Um, and then the Ley Organica de Educación Superior, the organic law of higher, higher education is the same. So the idea of interculturality or supporting interculturality is everywhere. It's everywhere. So it's the best law uh, yeah, in regard to uh, bilingual education. And then the Ley Organica de Comunicación, um, it's, uh, it's the same thing. So uh, the uh, TV channels, uh, newspapers, everything has to use the language, the indigenous languages. Yeah, so the legal, legal frame is okay. So it is a poem to bilingual education. Yeah, there is uh, some quotations here, but uh, I have to run because the time is just coming out. So, so just, uh, just to mention some ideas. So in the, in the Constitution, so the Article 1 says Ecuador is defined as an intercultural and pluricultural state. The Article 2, the established uh, establishes that the Spanish is the official language of Ecuador and the Spanish Quechua and Shuar are official languages of intercultural relations. So what is the what is this intercultural relations? So we need to think theoretically and uh, practically what is this? So other ancestral languages are of official use for its speakers in the regions they inhabit in. So the state will respect and stimulate the conservation and use. And then in the, um, in the section of uh, collective rights, uh, it says um, um, the people has right to a free, intercultural, inclusive, diverse, and participatory communication in every social interaction. Uh, and then to develop and strengthen the system of bilingual educational, intercultural education from early stimulation to higher education, preserving the identities and methodologies of teaching and learning. So, like this, you can find uh, a lot of things, um, in a lot of uh, statements, and articles, uh, which, which are mandatory, actually, for uh, in any place. So the laws, the Constitution and the laws are mandatory. But in these cases, in Ecuador, nothing happened, I, uh, as I will show you now. So the silent war against bilingual education. So in this, in this context, uh, it's, it's uh, very interesting, nice uh, 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 context. So the, the, the first idea, the first idea um, uh, related to education and uh, bilingual education weakening in, in Ecuador is that the discourse of recuperation of the Rectoria Estatal de la Educación. So yeah, it's a kind of a state control or recuperation on the stewardship of education, right? It is supposed 
that the education were not in hands of the uh, of the minister of education or of the state, uh, uh, but but in hands of uh, uh, corpor corporatist organizations. Yeah, yeah, and it was uh, mediatic the media discourse just to to declare war against the teachers, teachers' union, yeah, the, um, uh, education educators' national union, the UNE, yeah. And on the other hand, it was a war against organized social participation or influence on education. So, for example, it, uh, the discourse of, rectoria, discourse of rectoria estatal of education was used as to, to break the, the agreement between the Ministry of Education and the CONAI, yeah, the largest organization in the country. Yeah, so um, there were uh, many... Um, uh, interventions by government and TV and, and the media in general just to the, this discredit the or indigenous organizations and their participation in education. Yeah, so it happens in the highest la uh, uh, levels of uh, the government and in the schools. So the people in charge of uh, supervising, for example, the, the education in the schools, they are just neglecting the, any participation of the uh, parents in, in the education because of the state are recuperating the rectoria estatal de educación, the, the education. So there is an <coughs> so there is an intense media attacks to uh, education, um, bilingual education authorities and organization leaders discrediting the the system in general, the curriculum system, the educational resources produced by bilingual teachers. For example, history, uh, the, the, area, the area studies of history and uh, in, in the education was part of uh, two or three uh, national interventions by, by TV just to discredit this, 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 uh, um, uh, this area because, um, because it was in the book, it was mentioned that the, the CONAI and the CONAI was was against the government, and the Correa said, no, this, this book of history for schools are making a propaganda in behavior of uh, CONAI. So um, with this discourse that the, uh, all of the educational resources produced in, the, in, 20, in 20 years by indigenous professors and uh, technicians from uh, the bilingual education was just put in the, in the garbage. So this is, uh, this is one of the books. Yeah, well, it, it is part of a series of books. Um, uh, yeah, it's a practical, practical orientations and guides to teach in the to teach in the schools, and all of these books were just um, uh, 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 not used in the, in the school systems and anymore. So, and, and it is it is a really nice book. So, um, uh, a part of the uses of the Quechua language, it has. Um, uh, the equipment, um, the, the team who prepared these books were uh, uh, from different places of the country, and they did a very nice work uh, collectively in creating, for example, uh, uh, a specialized lex uh, lexicon for, for every uh, knowledge area. So uh, for social sciences, math, uh, uh, Natural, nature sciences, etc. So, and this, it is the best, the best um, um, lexicons yeah, uh, available in this book. So, I didn't see others. Yeah. So, so some uh, it is a press conference. Uh, yeah, the, the historical leaders defended the bilingual education. Yeah, it's in February two thousand eight, and then uh, <coughs> there there were a new institutional new institutional organization in the, of, the, of the country. So the country was divided in nine different, uh, nine different regions, yeah, and, uh, different regions and um, in, uh, different uh, zones. And um, there is a coordination, coordination uh, in there. And then uh, uh, there, there are uh, some uh, number of districts, uh, one, um, 140 uh, districts uh, in the country. And then within the districts, uh, there are um, um, circuits. And then the schools are the, the, yeah, the individual unity within this, this, this system. 
Yeah, so in this, in this system, the, the division of uh, different jurisdictions uh, just disappear. So the, the, there is not any, any more the, the educación hispana and educación bilingüe, um, which, is, which is fine, which is fine. But there is not any, 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 um, any uh, criteria, any different criteria as to establish which, uh, which schools need to, 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 to be considered as a bilingual education. So even though there are 60 percent of indigenous uh, indigenous children, for example, in the schools, uh, uh, it is just ignored because there is not any criteria. Yeah, uh, when the jurisdiction divide uh, divide was just abandoned. So uh, this is the number of uh, uh, the zones, uh, districts, and uh, circuits in, in, the, in the country. Yeah. So. Uh, it started uh, many years before, but in this government just uh, was uh, concreted this, this uh, new uh, um, model of administration. So there is, um, yeah, the government are just organizing, organizing the uh, Unidades Educativas del Millennio. Yeah, so this the Millennium, the, the schools of the Millennium. So this, uh, this is a very uh, huge and monumental schools uh, throughout the country. In this moment, there are three, three, uh, 300 schools of millennials, so with more than 7 million of uh, investments uh, for, for, for each. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so this is the... Uh, the Millennium School in, in Roca Fuerte, just in the, in the Sucumbios, Amazon, in the Amazon. But um, um, so it is uh, the, this project. Uh, this project is focused, uh, especially in, in infra infrastructure and equipment. So uh, the schools are full of uh, computers, computers, and uh, everything you can imagine for, be, for being a good school. Um, infrastructure and equipment, but there is nothing about the teacher teacher training, for example. So um, they, are the, they are the same the same teacher. So many of them uh, just um, um, just fear to to use the computers, for example. I was myself in some of the uh, schools of the Millennium, and uh, uh, teachers have. Uh, very, very nice uh, computer labs, but it is just uh, saved in there because they don't know how to use, how to use it. Or they use just to, to play or for elemental, elemental things. Yeah? So the, uh, the training, uh, uh, professors are not part of the official concerns. So in the schools of the millennium, textbooks, yeah, so uh, there is not any, any room for indigenous cultures or knowledge of languages. So the textbooks are the, 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 the same for, for all. For example, you see uh, the language, 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 language literature, language and literature. So the intercultural, this is the concept of interculturality for the government. So you have uh, indigenous peoples and uh, Afro-America, Afro-Ecuadorian, and uh, supposedly the mestizos. And the studio sociales, the same thing. So it's a Quichua, a Quichua woman, um, and uh, Montuvio from the coast, and this is the same. It is a, a, a Sachila, Sachila indigenous people from the coast. So a part of, uh, of besides of this this representation. So if you go to the contents, there is nothing, absolutely. So you can find something about Confucius or Platon or things like that, but nothing about indigenous culture, cultures or knowledge. Mm. It is the same thing for the uh, general uh, uh, basic education. So, the, yeah. So you can see the, the, the schools of, you know, of the millennium and other schools. Yeah, no room for indigenous language knowledge. So this is the this is the, the curriculum or the, or the courses they offer. So language and literature, math, uh, uh, natural and social. Um, environment, uh, natural sciences, social sciences, uh, aesthetic education, uh, physical education, uh, foreign language, and optativa, yeah, it's an optional course, and sometimes people can teach uh, language, language, and uh, ancestral language and culture as optativa. Yeah? Uh, and this is the standardized 
curriculum for all of the schools. So there is nothing for indigenous people. So uh, I found, I found these this, this books and this curriculum, even in the more um, far away schools in the jungle of Amazon. So there is nothing for indigenous peoples. So there, there is a, there is a, um, there is a good perception for by indigenous people. So uh, ask the, the students and the professors, uh, do you like to learn Quechua? So it, it's just to show, right? Yeah. So uh, the students said uh, Sumagta. It, it's 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 very nice. So they like to learn to learn in Quechua. Yeah, Sumagta. It's a, yeah, but we we like it. And then the professors a little bit yeah less yeah, uh, and the uh, the author. So, so uh, do you see this mana? So I don't like Ashaya a little bit. Um, uh, yeah, it makes happy, and it's yes, yes I want. So, uh, so there is a there is a um, uh, um, uh, openness to to learn the language. Yeah, but there is not professors or uh, any uh, political will as to support the learning of the languages. So the, the schools of the millennium, so now there are 20,000 schools which are unidocentes, unidocentes or pluridocentes. So it means that one or less than six teachers uh, uh, per school. Yeah, so um, throughout the country. So it is a lot, so 20,000 schools. Yeah, so um, this is, this is uh, certainly a problem because uh, one, one teacher has to teach has to teach to uh, six grades. Yeah, one, one, two students for, for, for grades. So it is, it is uh, difficult. Uh, the quality is not uh, good. But um, it is not, as a, as a president used to say, that this is the escuelas de la pobreza. It were, they were created by people.